Yellowstone National Park Part 3 The History of the Park Yellowstone National Park, America's most famous national park, was also America's first national park. Behind the scenery lie millions of years of work done by nature, the most important change starting around 17 million years ago. As discussed in part 1 of this mini-series about Yellowstone, the North American tectonic plate began moving over the Yellowstone hotspot approximately 17 million years ago. The plate has been moving over it ever since, although at a reduced pace. Yellowstone also has history that is more recent than the tectonic shifting. The eruptions Yellowstone is famous for happened hundreds of thousands of years ago and were so powerful that they covered approximately two-thirds of America with ash and debris. For hundreds of years, nothing lived there. Then came the new species. Animals arrived in the Yellowstone area around 480,000 years ago, following plants that came a bit before them. They were faced with a harsh environment, their every step bringing a chance of falling into a new developing volcanic feature. However, both flora and fauna adapted to this environment. The plants and animals lived undisturbed by humans for millions of years, until mankind came upon the area around 15,000 years ago. At first, the lands did not seem hospitable. However, mankind learned of the challenges like the other living things had and eventually settled in the area 11,000 years ago. The first tribes to evolve from the Native Americans that colonized the area were the Shoshone, Bannocks, Crow, and Nez Pierce. All the tribes followed migrating bison near the Yellowstone River, which was a dangerous path as other tribes such as the Blackfeet would often attack them. The tribes utilized resources from the volcanic eruptions of Yellowstone, especially obsidian, which they used to make arrowheads and knives. Obsidian from Yellowstone has been found as far away as the Mississippi Valley due to the trade of obsidian with other tribes. The first European explorers to reach the Yellowstone area were British fur trappers in the 1790s. The first American expedition was in 1805, the Lewis and Clark expedition. One man, John Coulter, left the expedition and joined fur trappers. One of the things he saw while in the company of the fur trappers was a geothermal feature in the geothermal areas of Yellowstone. However, when Coulter reported back to Lewis and Clark, his report of the fire and brimstone hell was dismissed as hallucinations. Several more people reported the same things as Coulter had after 1805. Geysers, sulfuric smells, and unexplained steam coming out of underground sources. Everybody dismissed these sightings as hallucinations as well until the first organized party visited Yellowstone in 1869. The Cook Folsom Peterson expedition was privately organized by three people. The expedition kept track of things they found in a journal. Another expedition, the Washburn Langford Doan expedition, took specimens of plants they found and also kept track in a journal. Some people who heard of the reports of the beauty of the area wanted to preserve the area somehow. The idea arose to make Yellowstone a national park, and several more reports convinced the government to make Yellowstone a national park. On the 1st of March in 1872, Ulysses S. Grant signed the act of dedication that made Yellowstone America's first national park. Locals opposed the creation and maintainment of the park because they thought that the park would stifle economy, and several government representatives lobbied to create logging, hunting, and mining systems in the park. George Bird Grinnell, a famous naturalist, visited Yellowstone National Park. He described the hunting of bison and deer as wiping out more than 3,000 buffalo every year. Two years later, the first superintendent of the park, Nathaniel Langford, quit his job. Government finally decided that they needed to provide money for the care of national parks. The U.S. Army interfered with the park development by making a base at Camp Sheridan and eventually spreading out and developing outposts all over the park. The Army completely reorganized the few things the park management had done, and on October 31st of 1918 turned control back to the National Park Service. The Civilian Conservation Corps also played a major role in park development by building campgrounds, developing trails, and fighting wildfires. Visitation increased to over 1,000 people per year. In 1959, an earthquake happened that damaged roads and severely altered the Yellowstone geyser system. Fires in 1988 also burned 36% of the park. In 1987, the NPS began the Wolf Reintroduction Program, transporting wolves into Yellowstone. 
the park saw a decrease in bison and mule deer and an increase in red foxes. Yellowstone has been decreed a World Heritage Site and a National Biosphere Reserve. Thank you for watching this mini-series about Yellowstone National Park, and as always, if you enjoyed the video, click the like button, favorite, or share it with your friends. And if you didn't see the first or second parts of this mini-series, I highly recommend watching them too.